Saturday, session two, an update in just a moment, but we stop here at Crossover Symmetry. Dugan Moran is the founder. Great company, strengthening arms, strengthening shoulders, and now you're multi-sport, but let's focus on these bands and all they do for pitchers and how you've developed this company. So the, the company started uh, in 2006, and we've really come a long way, and that the, the program itself is developed, uh, and, and our goal is to take a scientifically proven program and really make it easy for athletes to do on a regular basis. So that's really what we've done, and, and, and the result is uh, helping these, uh, these players keep their arms healthy and increase velocity. All right, we'll have a little bit more in just a moment, but here is Vice President of Player Personnel, David Ronsley, with your update from Saturday Session 2. Thank you, Darren. It's Saturday night. We're th through three days so far at the WWBA World Championships. We've had a lot of great baseball. We have a lot more to come. We've got playoffs starting tomorrow. But first of all, to open up this little video, let's talk about the important thing. And as a lot of you know, the fine PG All-American Zach Shannon was injured in today's game, had to be removed from the uh, complex in an ambulance. And I'm very pleased to announce I've talked to Brian Heiler, the Midland Redskins coach. I've talked to Zach myself. He was taken to a local hospital. He was discharged about two hours later. He did suffer a dislocated ankle, but in the context of what that injury looked like, it looked like it could be a lot more serious. So certainly all of perfect games, thoughts and prayers and best wishes go out to Zach Shannon and his family, and I'm sure all you do too. And please think about them in your thoughts. Now let's get back to the baseball. The baseball today, I, I talked to some scouts and they said, hey, doesn't it seem like there's a lot of swing and miss in this tournament? And that was a, kind of a common theme, actually, talking to people. And I'm like, of course there's swing and miss. There's tremendous pitching. And that was sort of the theme of this afternoon's event. It, it was like a, a rainstorm and the flowers come up. It was, it was 3 o'clock time slot, and everybody started throwing 93, 94, 95 miles an hour. So we're going to go through some of those pitchers right now. Um, I talked to one national level scout, and I said, hey, who's really impressed you? And right away, he talked about Derek Casey from the Evo Shield Canes. Casey from Mechanicsville, Virginia, came into this event as the number 146 top prospect in the country, has an uh, offer from a uh, commitment to Virginia. And I've seen Derek a lot in the past, 88, 91, touch of 92, some good off-speed stuff. Today, according to the scout, 91 to 95, he maintained the velocity. The curveball and the changeup were outstanding. And this national level scout just said, hey, that's the best thing I've seen the last three days. I talked to another scout and he said, hey, the buzz around here is about Scott Blewett. Blewett's a 6'6", 200-pound right-hander from upstate New York, pitches for the Syracuse Sports Zone Chiefs. He was 91-95 as well, touched some 95s early, uh, sort of lost his velocity as he goes, but a big, tall pitcher from upstate New York and, and just a huge f uh, future for Scott Blewett. One thing from that Syracuse Sports uh, Zone Chiefs game, they were playing East Cobb baseball, and I was watching that game, and I know we don't have video of this, so I'll describe it. It was the best defensive play I've, I think I've seen this month, all the baseball games I've been to. Daz Cameron, the great, great uh, 2015 outfielder for East Cobb, was up, one out, men on second and third, and he just rips a blue at curveball into the left center field gap. Running hard out of the box, I got him 4-4 on the turn. Zach Sullivan, the Syracuse center fielder, makes a full out diving catch. Looked like a triple all the way, maybe even inside the park home run if he doesn't come up with it. Not only does Sullivan catch it, he pops right up, throws a one hop strike to third base to get the runner, trying to tag up, go from second to third. Just an incredible baseball play. But now back to the pitchers. Next pitcher I'd like to mention, Bo Burrows. I sat on Bo Burrows, a junior from Weatherford, Texas for three innings, playing for the uh, Texas scout team Yankees. He was a solid 90-93. He was hitting 93 every inning in those three innings, which is very nice to see in a young pitcher. Had an 81, 82 mile an hour slider. There's almost like a changeup. It was short and quick. He got people out in front of it because his changeup was actually harder. He threw an 85 mile an hour changeup that we actually asked the umpire whether it was a two seamer or a changeup. It was diving that much. He said, I asked the catcher that too. He said it was a, a straight a changeup, but it had lots of action on it. So that's Bo Burrow is a junior from Weatherford, Texas. Uh, Keith Weisenberg, Marucci Elite's been a little disappointing as a team so far in this event, event, but a lot of their individual players have stood out. Keith Weisenberg from Florida, a Stanford commit, was 91-95 today, uh, used to change up a lot. And if that 91-95 is becoming a familiar theme, it's because that's what's been happening out there. 
Uh, moving on, Eric Manoa from the Toronto Blue Jays scout team, young man from South Florida, Florida International commit. 90 to 93 for a couple innings, that's a, by a mile or two an hour, that's the hardest we've ever seen him throw. Another great matchup was between two underclass left-handers, Thomas Sapucky from the Royal Scout team and Zachary Antianisi from the PG Dark Green. And these are two young lefties, Zapucky is a junior, Antianisi is a sophomore. Zapucky, being an older, more mature kid, was 90 to 94 miles an hour, shows a power slider that got up to 85 miles an hour, and, and he is truly one of the top junior pitchers in the country. Antionisi is a young man that we just discovered a couple weeks ago. He came down to the, the world, WWBA World Underclass in Fort Myers. We got a tip to go see him. He is a talented young man. He struck out 15 in six innings in that game, and he was the winning pitcher today through six innings, struck out nine, only allowed a single run, 85 to 87 on the fastball because the strength hasn't kicked in, but he has a breaking ball that right now may be one of the best breaking balls in the country. It's a big true 12-6 downer, and he commands it with maturity. So please remember that name, Zachary Antionisi, and he's from New Jersey. Moving on, uh, we're going to talk about Anthony Molina. I think that's a name we're going to be talking about for a long time. He's a 2016 from American Heritage High School down in the Miami area. Pitches for the South Florida Elite Squad. He just got a little tune-up start today, two innings. The South Florida Elite Squad is going to be in the playoffs, it looks like, and he'll pe pitch in, in, in the playoffs, I'm sure. He was an easy 90 to 93. And remember, this is a high school sophomore, an easy 90 to 93. Um, and I could keep on going on the pitchers. I'm going to cut it off. There's going to be one position player I'm going to mention. Evan Skog from Illinois plays for the Red Scout team. He had a great day today at the plate as, as the Reds uh, won their third straight game. Two for two, three RBIs, a walk, and a big home run to right field. And Evan Skog, I've seen him a couple times this summer. He has a great combination. He's very strong, 5'11", about 195, 200. He's a left-handed hitter, and he swings the bat hard. He's up there trying to hit the ball hard. Most importantly, he seems to square it up all the time. I, the first time I saw him, it's like, there's a lot of effort in this swing. He's not going to square it up, but every time I've seen him, he hits the ball hard, and it comes off the barrel hard. So one of the best power-hitting hit catchers in the country, Evan Skog. All right, thank you very much, David. Obviously, the bands and the crossover symmetry iron scap. As we wrap it, explain the iron scap, please. So the iron scap is a strengthening component to the crossover symmetry system. The crossover program is designed to be used on a daily basis, uh, so it's light enough that we're not creating fatigue in the shoulder, whereas the, the iron scap is high-intensity scap strengthening. So when you do this program, you're going to feel it. You might be sore in the morning. Your website, quickly. GoCrossover.com. All right, GoCrossover.com. That puts a wrap on Saturday's action. David Ronsley, thank you very much. Dugan, thank you very much. And we we'll look forward to seeing Sunday at the ballpark here in Jupiter.